everybody. So Aquaman has been out for a while now. It came out on December 21st and we waited like two weeks to go watch it and we finally did and now we are reviewing it and um let's see. How was it? Aqua bro. Aquaman. First things first. There's a monologue that he says. He's the Flash. And then it was like my father was a lighthouse keeper and my mother was a queen. Their love was forbidden. Blah 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 blah. I am. And then that moment, I just she and I were just like the, the flash. flash in the movie theater. Literally, we we're like to each other the Flash, and we laughed. All you Flash fans, <laughs> you guys probably if you guys went and watched Aquaman. You guys will all think the same thing we thought. Yeah, when he was saying that monologue. When he was doing the monologue. and You're just like, oh shoot, it's the Flash. He goes, I am. And I'm pretty sure all of you thought, oh my god, the Flash. Because, you know, the, the Flash, his intro, it gets longer and longer and longer. Yeah. But this isn't about, about the, Flash. the Flash. The this Flash is, is coming back, though. This is about Aquaman. Okay. And the film, um, it was produced... And directed by uh, an Asian guy, I think it's James Wan, or something like that. Um, it is the first superhero film being directed by an Asian eth ethnicity, so which is pretty cool. Um, as you guys know, we're Asian, so it's pretty cool. the The story that they chose to go with it. It's kind of like a spin-off of the cartoon, the animated um, film of the Justice League um, film where it's the Justice League versus, versus the Ocean Master. But they chose to use that as a backstory for Aquaman, which is a good thing because it's a good backstory. And the events of the film happens after the Justice League film. So it's not a prequel to Justice League. It is post-Justice League. Now, we didn't go watch Justice League, but we chose to invest in watching Aquaman because um, we when we chose to invest watching in Wonder Woman, it turned out to be a good thing. So I feel like the standalone films are getting better and that they should have never done Justice League. That they kind of rushed it. They should have never done it. So. Um, but for being a film that. Is about a superhero that. You know he kind of like. Aquaman wasn't really. One of the most popular DC characters. Like he, he was popular. But no one really like. no You know growing up. You didn't hear kids. Well, it's all about like Batman, Superman. Yeah. And and a Wonder Woman. Right, so see. growing up, you didn't really hear kids, you know, want to say, oh yeah, Aquaman! No. No one really cared about Aquaman. They People, didn't call him Aquaman, call him Merman. <laughs> yeah, so, it was, it, was, it was pretty good, the way they did it, because it made you feel like Aquaman um, has a big mean, like, purpose in the DC story which he does and so that's why like I felt like they did, they needed to hit it with this film and I think that they did so you know just a little brief about Aquaman so it's this little story between you know where the two worlds where they cannot be together well the mom was already married to the king and no she was supposed to this is she actually ran away from her wedding Oh, okay. Yeah, Never that's mind. why it was such a big crime. Was she was supposed to get married to the um, king. <laughs> I thought she was already married. Yeah, and, Anyways, but... And she didn't. Yeah, so she ran away, and then she gets saved by the dad. And she ends up living with him, and yes, they have a baby together and everything, but they found her. And to keep him safe, she had to return because they would bring an army to her. So she leaves and she promised that she'll come back and then she never did and pretty much by this time, by the time Aquaman was big already, his name was Arthur, 
uh, Arthur was big already, older, he already knew about his life and being like, you know, an uh, the Aquaman, mer yeah. world, mer people and everything like that. He knew all about them, the stories. The mom always used to tell him as a kid and the dad kept it with him, you know, so he knew all about well, plus, it. But... Plus he met with the mom's royal guard. Yeah. Like... So he raised up Aquaman and taught him yes. the ways of, kind of taught him like to be a the summary. King. The summary of what it's like to be an Atlantean. Yeah, and to to get him ready to be the rightful king because right. he is the first heir to the throne. Right. But people don't accept the human people, right. so he's, he's half half. half. Yeah. And so you know stuff like that, and you know the his pretty much his brother, his half brother is like going to rule Atlanta differently. Atlantis. Atlantis. Oh my gosh, I'm thinking of Little Mermaid. <laughs> Atlanta City is a Little Mermaid. Anyways, but yeah, so his brother is trying to rule it differently, pretty much bring war to the human world and everything like that. And he, because he is half human and half like the mer people, he can save Atlantean. them. And so that's why, like, Mara, the princess, she comes and get him. But she's, uh, you know, it's a crazy thing. Yeah. He's in love with her, but she's engaged to his half brother and all so, these things like that. So you guys have to understand that. Aquaman is not a fish. He's not a mermaid. Like, he's a human. It just so happened that he, they, the, the people of Atlantis, they're humans. But they existed back when Atlantis, the ancient city, used to be above water. And they then they created this dev devastating e event that put that buried their city underwater. But then with that, the electrical, the, the 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 chemicals and the stuff they're working with, turn made them able to live underwater. So they're not, they're not, fishmen. Some of them are. There are some that 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 didn't evolve like they did and turn into fishmen. Yeah, they're still like but, fish. But they're but then they themselves are humans. They just can breathe in water can swim really fast in the water, so they don't have a problem coming to land. Like, um, they can come to land and, and, and totally breathe out in the air because they used to be above land. So, they're, like, you have to get that misconception that, like, Aquaman is half man, half fish. He's not. He's full man. It's just... He's, and he's, just to differentiate that and the thing to is, make it easier. He's full man. He's not a god. So, he, he he's not a god. He's just... A human being, but a, 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 he's he's kind of like a mutant. What what for X Men? He's a mutant. Yeah, so he's half mutant. That's what he really is. So basically, you know, he they he pretty much is trying to find his mother. What happened? And he kind of the they the brother tells him that like you know the mom got sent away to this what place? This other place? Yeah, she, and she got died. sent to like the the. The depths or something like that. Yeah, so she, and supposedly, she died. supposedly anybody who goes there dies. Doesn't come back alive. Yeah, they yeah. suffer a horrible death. Yeah. and so Mara, the the guy, um, what's his name that was teaching Aquaman? I forgot his name. I forget his name, but, yeah, he, but he's, he's he played. He, he's like the right hand man to he the. He played. Brother. He played uh, Norman Osborn in Spider Man, and he played the Green Goblin back in the in the. The Tobey Maguire Spider-Man. Yeah, but he pretty much tells um, tells um, Arthur that if Arthur gets a hold of where the Triton is, Arthur can take on the throne and beat out his brother. And so that's when yeah, they because, went on the journey. Because the the Triton, the the, the 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 Triton, any person who wields a Trident, like essentially becomes king. So it's kind of like King Arthur, the whole sword. If you are able to pull the sword from the stone, then you become the king. So it's the whole idea that if you're able to retrieve the trident and bring him back, then you're king. And so, but, like, some people believe that, it's, that it exists, and some people don't, because it's so old. It's such an old thing that it's like a myth. And Arthur's half-brother, um, the Ocean Master, I forget his name, but he doesn't believe in it. Because he, and, and Arthur has no choice but to believe in it. And Mira has well, no choice but to believe in it. Well, the reason why Arthur kind of thinks about it is because his mom used to tell him the story and she was the fork. 
right. to tell him. Right. But like, you know, there was a king, he had a triton, you know, but this this happened and it's forever gone. And when you right. find it, it's like the most powerful thing. Right. So, so, even like his mom sort of believed it, but Mira believed it. Um, and, and so like, it's like a split in the middle where half the, half the Atlantean people believe it, the other half don't. Yeah, so it's like... So Mera and Arthur ends up on this journey to find it. She saves him and they go on this journey to find out where is the Triton. So as they go through the journey, their brother sends his people after them to destroy them because if Arthur's dead, Arthur cannot take the throne because Arthur is trying right. to he doesn't want to, but you know, it's the it's a way f for him to just kind of like stop everything, you know. Yeah. And so on the way he goes, he finally, like, they end up at this, that place where, like, all these, like, creature comes out and, like, you know, to get past them, they're afraid of light. And so they use, like, the light torch and they get through and they end up on this island. And who appears on that island and who saves them? It's his mom. She's been living on that island for who knows how long, ever since he was a child and she has never gotten out. There's only one way in and one way out, and she has never got past it. So she's been stuck there forever. And inside the waterfall is where the Triton is. And many people have come and go, and they cannot get the Triton. And she has tried, and she cannot get it. So she says for him to give it a try. Right. And then he goes, and there's that creepy big monster. He's like a Kraken. Yeah. yeah. And he... Here's a little thing about Arthur. When he was young, he can talk to the sea world, the animals. Yeah, he can talk to animals. Yeah. He, can talk to, he can talk to the sea animals. And the thing is, like, they, they, they showed that throughout the film, that he possesses that special ability that the, the other um, ocean dwellers, the other Atlanteans, they don't possess. They don't have the ability to talk to animals. That's something that he got which is the same thing as the king king the, the, the king the, of the triton the, the, the former king he had that ability to talk to the, the the sea animals so he brought the the world the, the atlantean world to peace but you know when arthur went to go retrieve it he was able to talk to the kraken i'm just gonna call it a kraken i forget what the name is and i and, and um, I, I don't know what kind of fucking monster or animal it is. I'm just going to call it Kraken because I assume that Krakens are gigantic and they're ugly and they're huge. So I call it a Kraken, but he could talk to it. And, and when he was able to talk to the Kraken, the Kraken understood that he had the same powers as the king. Yeah, so she's just like, have at it. If right. you're worthy, right. you can take it. Yeah, cause the, because the thing is, everyone hates the Kraken, but... Because the king can talk to the, the, the animals, the king isn't afraid of the kraken. And the king doesn't see the kraken as an enemy. And so the kraken understood that. And so that's why the king went and put himself there. Mm -hmm. Because he knew that the only way a worthy person can come through is if... They understand they, everything. Yeah, Everyone, right. everything. If they can understand the animals. Yeah. And... Because if if you don't, you're just gonna fight your way through, fight, 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 fight. And you're just gonna kill everything. You're not worthy of it. When yeah. he, when basically Arthur he finds that he's not worthy. He's afraid. He just doesn't. He just wants peace through the world, like the king once did. Right. So that's why he was worthy of it. Right. Yeah. And not just that, but if you really think about it, guys, like the being having that ability probably led to Arthur being able to talk to those dwellers, those 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 fish dudes, and know what they're afraid of and know what they're doing. Because those guys can't talk. But they're like ha they're they're like fish. They're 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 you know, and so he was able to retrieve the trident. Um and once he retrieved the trident he gained the powers of the former king. Mm -hmm. All the powers. So he gained the, the, he got extremely strong, he gained the, much the, the suit. 
Yeah, he went to battle, and instead of battle bringing in a whole army of the Seven Sea, he brought, like, you know, the animals to them, you know? Right. And then the sea animals and everything. And then, you know, pretty much he fights, but he doesn't want to kill his half-brother. And his pretty much his mom comes back, and she just, she says she never wants the two sons to fight. She just wants peace through the whole world. So pretty much, like, you know, they kind of work things out. And, like... Well, that's what you think. That's what they, 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 they assume. But the ocean, don't get it wrong, guys. Ocean Master's a bad guy. He's not a good guy character. He's a bad. He's a bad. He's a bad guy in the story. So even though, like, sure, in the movie they made it look like he kind of gave up, he doesn't really give up. He's like, just let me in. Let me yeah. have some thinking and my thought explain. Right. So, <laughs> so the the, um, you know, the Ocean Master is a villain, and he's 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 like the reverse Flash of the Flash. So he's like. Arthur's arch nemesis, and then um, obviously, at, um, with Arthur stopping the war, he prevented um, the war between the surface dwellers and the the, the 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 underwater dwellers, and which leads to the secret scene at the end. Um, I know we didn't talk about this guy, but his name is Manta, and he. I, I like the way they did his character. Um, they made his character. His character is very. The way they developed his character is very similar to Killmonger in um, Black Panther. That he blames Arthur for his father's death because his because Arthur had a chance to to save his father and Arthur didn't, and so he blames Arthur that why his father died, and he will stop at nothing to kill. Arthur. Um, he doesn't know that that's his name. He just knows him as Aquaman. Yeah, they all just know yeah. him as Aquaman. Yeah. Right. So, he... There's a, a big fight scene earlier once he attained the suit from from the Ocean Master, from the brother, the half-brother. There's that big fight scene where him and Arthur, they fight. And Arthur beats him. So, by throwing a, like, giant chain rock thing at him he like flew at off. him and, and it, it blocked his laser beam on his left eye to blew up the, the mask and knocked him out and so he gets rescued by um the science, the science guy, guy. Yeah. who believes that like there are another world right he believes under in, them. he does but he believes in Atlantis. yeah he believes in it and he believes they don't the thing is, a lot of people know who Aquaman is. They don't know him as Arthur. And so they're trying to find him. And they think that he can lead them to the underworld and everything. Pretty much uh, the ocean people. And But like, you know, they have never been able to find find them. But with him finding this, saving this guy, it, this guy is pretty much going to help this researcher Asian guy who right. went for Aquaman. Right. And so, um, but... Don't get it twisted. DC is trying to do the Legion of Doom story for their Justice League. Um, so they've assembled a certain amount of characters by now. They've assembled uh, Lex Luthor, Deathstroke, and now they've assembled um, Manta. Because I believe Manta is going to join the Legion of Doom to battle the Justice League. So, even though, like, the scientist guy found him, Manta's probably going to end up working with, with Lex Luthor to battle the Justice League and how they're planning out their story. Because the way that they closed off Aquaman, I don't really feel there's going to be a part two because it was closed off really nice. Yeah. yeah, it's not like Wonder Woman, where Wonder Woman was closed off, but they left, like, an open ending because... Um, her her boyfriend Chris Pine killed himself like Captain America but he's still <laughs> like alive okay so we don't want to spoil so much for you guys but just you know some little insight here and there of the movie it was really good it was really well done we really liked it and um if you still haven't seen it, do go watch it because the scenes, the stuff, the storyline we tell you guys, there is so much more to it. And honestly, 
in my opinion, no hate, no, you know, to, not to offense anyone, but I think this is like the best um, DC so far movie for me. Oh yeah, definitely. I, I really enjoyed yeah. it. Yeah. I think it was it, it was better than Wonder Woman because Wonder Woman was very slow paced. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it was really really good. Um, honestly, I did not expect a lot when. It was like coming out with trailers and everything. I was like, oh, you know, it's so cool. It seems interesting, you know. I was kind of like iffy on it, but I just she was like, let's go watch it. And you know what? I liked it. And yes, I'm sorry. It just made me laugh at the end. But it was really, really good. I really like it. And, con you know, congrats to to James Wan and the, the, the cast of Aquaman and them. Because they are now the highest grossing DC film. So they set the bar really high for DC films now. Um... I think they're starting to realize that superhero films are meant to be lighthearted and enjoyable, not dramatic. So I hope that, that they continue to go this way. And I look forward to um, their next films and stuff because there's going to be Wonder Woman 2, there's Shazam. Um, I tons about there's going to be The Flash, but I don't know if she wants to watch it. Nope. <laughs> I'm sorry. I love Grant Gustin as Barry Allen and The Flash. I'm not gonna watch. Well, there's okay. there's gonna be Batman, but I don't really know if I want to give another Batman shot. We don't know if Superman's gonna be Henry Cavill anymore because that's up in the air. So, <laughs> but yes, until the next movie we see or something like that, we will review again. If I had to give it a rating, da -da -da. all right. I approve of Aquaman. I am Aquaman. I am the Flash. Alright, we'll see you guys next time.